I'm Diane Buckner, and this is Fortune Hunters, the show where you see what kind of people are still trying to cash in on hot trends, even in tough times. <laughs> on this edition, selling luxury. Yeah, I have a fish. Caviar from New Brunswick. This entrepreneur is hoping people will buy more of life's little luxuries. It's not going to be tomorrow, but we have what it takes to become the king of caviar of Canada. And... This is a Citation XL. Private jets. How Calgary's Judson McCor is cashing in now that even the rich are counting their pennies. Uh, gross revenues were uh, just north of 40 million in the last year. Here at Fortune Hunters, we focus on hot trends. And you might think this week's trend of people loving expensive luxuries has gone stone cold. But you'd be wrong. Amazingly, this $27 billion industry is predicted to grow again this year. Not as much as it has in the recent past, but still, growth of any kind is impressive right now. Especially if you're hunting for a fortune. Here's our trend tracker. It's true that some companies selling luxury are struggling. But generally speaking, the luxury business stays strong in a recession. That's thanks to demand from the super rich and those who want to be wealthy middle-income earners who will save up for a taste of the good life. We scoured the country, searching for fortune hunters looking to live in the lap of luxury. In Vancouver, we found Devin and Judy Brooks, along with partner Val Litwin, and Blow Me Dry, a salon that specializes in one thing only, blow dries. They make house calls and office calls as well, a $30 treat. In Toronto, we spotted Michael Reddy and Mark Mincer and their condo garage. It's for people who need extra space to store their fabulous vehicles. And in New Brunswick, we're diving deep into the story of a Romanian immigrant, Cornel Chapa, and his ambitious plan to build an empire selling Canadian caviar. As always, we have two business brains with us in studio to talk about our fortune hunters' chances for success and to examine the trend in detail. Welcome, Mark McEwen and Michael Lefebvre. Thank you. Now, Michael, tell us your connection to the luxury trend. I'm the editor of Sharp Magazine, Canada's only national lifestyle luxury lifestyle magazine for men. Excellent. Okay. And Mark, I'm sure some viewers recognize you. You're a celebrity chef. I have North 44 restaurant, uh, one restaurant in Bymark. Uh, up and coming food store at end of May and we have a show on the Food Network. All right, all focused on luxury so we'll be very Absolutely. curious to hear mm -hmm. what you think about our fortune hunter and our hopeful caviar supplier. Let's all watch his story and figure out if Cornell Chapa has what it takes to net himself a fortune. Cornell Chapa wants to be Canada's king of caviar. It's a crown that could cost him everything. Anything, Stanley? What do you think? Tangled up in his dream is a quarter million dollars in loans. Yeah, I have a fish. Cornell's fishing for sturgeon, the carrier of caviar. Uh, yeah, it looks good. And he hopes it will carry him into the world of wealth and privilege. Black gold. Aphrodite's eggs. Gram for gram, caviar is one of the world's most expensive delicacies. <laughs> Top line caviar costs more than $10,000 a kilo. Oh, that's caviar. That's <laughs> very <laughs> Acadian caviar is a quarter of that cost. Mm. Lucky for Cornell, the recession isn't too hard on the rich. And even the wealthy love a good deal. Oh, I believe that is so good. <laughs> right now, Cornell's wild fish caviar can only be sold in Canada. That's the law. But the fish he's farming in his hatchery... That's an Atlantic sturgeon born here in the hatchery will produce caviar that could make him millions on the world market. We are going to have a yearly profit of $10 million. There's just one thing. That profit is nearly seven years away. God, I love them when I do that. He has to wait for his farmed sturgeon to mature. It's a long term, a very risky business, and you have to have a lot of knowledge and a lot of patience. 
Cornell's trained to cash in on caviar. Definitely she has caviar. I could take a sample of caviar right now. He studied sturgeon for six years and has a PhD in fishery engineering. He and his wife moved from Romania to New Brunswick, and coming from another country, it's hard to keep a business afloat. When you start uh, with uh, zero credit history, it's very, very difficult to convince any banks, even development banks, that you are, you are, you are going to succeed. Still, somehow Cornell convinced the government to lend him $250,000 for his hatchery. He's paying the bills with wild caviar. But now he has to double his sales or he could start sinking into debt. Right now we operate without a line of credit. We just operate on credit cards. Plus there's another problem, competition. Down the highway, Donald Bro has a head start. My short term goal is to make money and my long term goal is to make more money. <laughs> he started his fish farm 10 years ago and his sturgeon are ready to spawn. This is what it's all about. We started producing caviar two years ago and we're the only Canadian farm producers of caviar. Cornell will catch up if he can stay in business. Record fish would make over 10 kgs of caviar, so. Every gram counts. Give it to mom. Cornell's son and wife Dorina help process the caviar. Cornell's got what he hopes is black gold. We put some extra usually just a bit for, you know, about $10 worth. I'm going to call my uh, wholesalers. Now Cornell needs to reel in lots more restaurants and distributors. Also, if you think about uh, another order of caviar, you should uh, think about this quick. He sold $100,000 worth of fish eggs, but it's not enough to pay his bills. We just started this up. We got a few orders. He's got a problem his web designer has to fix. Well, we have a few issues. Some of the credit cards are being rejected. If you click on... Acadian Caviar is losing sales. But what Cornell really needs is to get out there and sell. And that's what he's doing today. You know, I'm optimistic. Uh, people here are very sophisticated. Cornell and Dorina hit the gastronomic capital of Canada. So uh, the Montreal becomes really, really important now. They've got to woo retailers and distributors. If I don't manage to uh, get uh, clients on the Canadian markets, uh, worst case scenario, I can, you know, my caviar is going to go bad and I'm going to go bankrupt. <laughs> First stop, La Mer, the high-end fish and seafood retailer in Quebec. Hi John, I'm Cornell, nice to meet you, nice to meet you. My partner is Dorina. John Melitakos invited Cornell to bring some samples. Nice taste. He's tasted caviar from around the world. It's sustainable, it's Canadian. <laughs> That's what's important, yeah. two things, and, uh, Canadian <laughs> and sustainable. Cornell's got a nibble, but... We don't have a firm order yet, but they are really interested, and I believe that uh, their uh, reputation they have in Montreal will help us penetrate this market. Next, a pitch at a shishi restaurant. It looks very, very nice. Small eggs. John Dini is a key caviar distributor. So Derek, what's your thoughts? Derek Tannen is one of Montreal's top chefs. Caviar for breakfast. Uh, only the few of us can afford it. Yeah. Cornell is competing with the expensive imports. You know, this is a different species. It's Canadian. He pushes the Canadian angle. So if you market it as a Canadian sturgeon caviar, to me that covers it. You guys, when you think fish uh, sturgeon or caviar, think at me. Oh, that's very nice. Good reviews. Cornell has no commitments to carry his Acadian caviar today, but he still thinks he'll net the deals he needs to reign. It's not going to be tomorrow, but we have what it takes to become the king of caviar of Canada. <laughs>